Um, the title of our proposal is Developing the robotics per Personal Robotics Market, Enabling New Applications Through Novel Sensors and Shared Autonomy. My name is Jan Becker. I'm Principal Engineer at Bosch here in Palo Alto and also the PI for this project. Um, Bosch is not that well known in the US, so I'd like to give you a very brief overview of what we're actually doing. The company is a little over 120 years old, uh, privately held mainly by a charitable uh, foundation. There are 270,000 employees worldwide, about 25,000 in the US. Uh, main divisions are automotive, industrial technology, consumer goods, building technologies, and solar technologies. Also, we are the largest automotive supplier worldwide. Uh, here in Palo Alto, we are part of the Bosch Corporate Research uh, with about 1,300 employees worldwide offices, mainly in Germany, but also in the US, ch uh, China, Japan, Singapore, and Russia. Here in Palo Alto, uh, we are the North American research arm of Bosch Corporate Research. Uh, in addition to our office here, we have offices in Pittsburgh, mainly working together with CMU, and uh, in Cambridge, working with MIT. Our topics are uh, very diverse, MEMS, sensors, circuit design, wireless, energy topics, uh, simulation, software design, user interaction, infotainment, web technologies. And our team here is doing autonomous systems, robotics, but also autonomous driving. The robots we are currently running is, uh, this one is Segway based, a robot uh, mainly used for 3D exploration and mapping. And we are also a contributor to the Stanford uh, Autonomous Driving Project uh, with contribution and sensors. And also Charles and Søren have done significant uh, contribution on the perception and planning side there. Um, the main motivation for the research we, is do, uh, we are doing is we want to make robots safer, more affordable, and capable. And for our peer tool project, that means we want to make the robot safe through a robotic sensor skin, affordable through bringing low-cost uh, components such as sensors uh, to the robot and also providing remote access uh, to the robot. Also, we want to make the robot more capable through developing applications for shared autonomy and porting the already existing 3D mapping and exploration software to ROS and to the Pier 2. Uh, the first project, uh, project lead is Lucas, he's over here, is affordable sensing for the Pier 2. Um, motivation here is uh, low-cost, high-performance MEM sensors are beco becoming available, really low-cost, mainly driven by the CE market, and that enables massive deployment of, of those sensors on the robot. We can easily have 10, 20, 30, 40 low-cost MEM sensors on one robot, and the robot would still be uh, highly affordable. Uh, and we are, we are really hoping that this enables uh, new and for, uh, also lower cost robotics applications in the future, such as replacing uh, expensive encoders by inexpensive uh, MEM sensors. Morgan at Stanford has already started working on, si on, on this. Um, also, one topic we have in mind is manipulator health monitoring, for example, through an analysis of of vibrations uh, being sensed by the MEM sensors, of course, collision and, and arm stiffness detection or user input uh, through MEM sensors deployed on the robot. Um, as far as the Pier 2 project is concerned, we'll integrate those sensors into ROS. We're already working on this. Uh, we'll work on autonomous sensor self calibration. There was another group I saw earlier also working on this, so maybe we should get together and work on this jointly. Um, also, multi-cluster sensor integration and uh, state tracking for manipulators, manipulated state estimation, and uh, also peer to arm calibration using the axles deployed on, uh, on the peer to arms. And also, we'll make sensors available to the community. We'll have some samples here. Lucas can show them later on, so please see Lucas if you would like to use more sensors in the future. We'll have three axes, axles, uh, 14 bits, really small. Uh, sensor itself is about three by three millimeters. Uh, the PCB we've made to integrate into ROS is about eight by 10 millimeters. Uh, we have gyros. Also, we can, if there's any interest, we can make available pressure sensors. For example, if you want to go with a PR2 onto an elevator, 
uh, make sure you're going in the right direction. That can easily be detected uh, with pressure sensors. We'll have force sensors, uh, magnetic sensors, or we can make torque sensors available, depending on what you want. And we would also then um, work on integrating those into ROS, if there's any, any communi community interest there. Um, second project uh, we're going to be doing for us is we will leverage a uh, robotic sensor skin we've developed in, in a different department for the PR2. Uh, the motivation behind that is um, that will enable a significant amount of new interaction technologies with the robot, for example, touchless teaching, but also on the safety side. If you look at the safety video we uh, showed on Monday, there'll be n a number of those those things shown in the, in the video on Monday would be able to, to be covered by the skin. And uh, we'll also work on optical detection and uh, collision-free uh, manipulation. In terms of tasks for, for this project, we'll customize the skin for the PR2. We, in the next few months, we'll find out how the, that would actually fit to the PR2. And we would are the, also in the process of developing uh, ROS drivers for the skin, then we'll work on collision avoidance with humans, touchless guidance for the base, and also touchless guidance for the arms. We'll also make uh, around three skins available to the community, um, so those groups interested in uh, robot uh, human interaction and also in safety for the PR2. Um, we'll make a, a short brief call uh, for ideas later on this year and then get together and decide what makes most sense uh, in terms of distribution to the community.